Okay. So what's the first step that we need to do, Michael? We uh, open the housing and we have to fill in the uh, water box. We gotta fill in the water box. We can do it. Yeah? We can do it with the hand valve that's connected to the water tank. Okay. So we got water now in the water tank, which is placed in the here. The water from the water tank comes to this pipe. We open that tap and then the water is going to be filling the splash box. Correct? Right. Okay. What's the next step? How, how full do we need to have it? More than half. More than half, yeah. okay. The piston rod uh, must be underwater. The piston must be underwater. Okay, can you talk a little bit about the purpose of the splash box? What's the purpose of the splash box? Why do we need the water in there? Uh, it's for lubricating the rubber pistons, for cooling. Okay. Um, also, you see if you pump and you have concrete inside the water, you see um, maybe that you need... Got a leak. Yeah, the, the pistons are leaking and you need okay. uh, to replace. And also, if you have oil inside, you know the uh, seal kit from the cylinder are broken. The seals from the cylinder it means they're broken. Yeah. If you've got oil in the, yeah. in the water. I can. <laughs> okay. What's the next step? Uh, the next step is to check uh, maybe oil level is okay on this machine. We have a, a gauge here, a level sensor also. Okay, so the level gauge is here for oil. Yeah. It's fine. We also can close now the hand valve for the water box. Okay, now so the, the splash box is full, so now we're going to close the tap. Yep. Yeah. Uh, then we con can connect some hoses on the other side. We can connect the concrete hose, that's the next uh, step right now. Yeah, right. The machine has a uh, battery main switch. So we got the isolator there, yeah, to right. switch that on. Switch. As soon as we switch that on, the, the spare battery is going to start charging. You can see a flashing here. Yeah, yeah, okay, that means it's charging. Yeah, okay, what's the next step, Michael? Then, then we can, in the display, we can see maybe we have any faults or is anything, is everything okay? So as soon uh, as we turn the battery isolator off, so the rig is, the, the machine is on, the pump is on, we can check the, let's say the self-diagnosis system, which says there's no fault right now. Yes. Means we're good to go. Okay. And so we got two options. We can operate from here, from this control panel, or we can operate from um, the remote control. Okay. Alrighty, how are we going to do it now? Okay, now system is operational, um, no faults. Then I try to start over the radio remote control. We have to switch off all switches. Okay, so hold it like that for us, thank you, so we can see. All right. So in this case, we got all of these buttons here. So this one needs to be in the middle, okay? This one needs to be on red. This one needs to be in the middle. This one needs to be on X here. And this one also on X, so down. And this one on red. And then, the, obviously the um, emergency stop needs to be pulled out in order to, for, for the remote to, to start. Got the display there. Okay, so it's starting. Then we can start up the radio remote control with the start button. Yep. If we push it and hold, uh, after three or four seconds, we switch on the radio remote control and okay. then we can start the engine. Okay. And by starting the engine, you have to press on the engine button here, the crankshaft button. This one. Yep. Okay, so now the pump is on. We can close the control panel box. Yeah. To use the tracks, we must switch on. Yeah, so left track, right track, very intuitive. Yeah. Okay. And just look around. Oh, 
how you increase the RPM in case we want to go faster. Push okay. and hold. Push and hold, yeah. And you can hear the engine going faster, yep. So now we're gonna explain the buttons that we have on the remote control. Okay. The remote control have a main key. We got the main key here, yeah. yeah. It's only to push in and the radio remote control is starting. Okay, there's an error there because the one of the one of the buttons was on, on green, it needs to be on red, it needs to be down. Okay? Right. Now we so start. We start again. Okay. Now it's now it says flow three percent. Can you please explain to us a little bit about the what flow three percent is? Flow three uh, percent is um, you have the flow rate on this machine, especially up to 110 cubic meters per hour, and you adjust it in percent. Uh, yeah. Here we can regulate it with a potentiometer. Yeah. Yeah. So we can go from zero all the way to 100 percent. 100 percent. Okay. So you can turn it this way. But it's the remote control must be switched on. Ah, the, the remote right. must be switched on. Okay, yep. Move a little bit here. That's all right. Yep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> then we have uh, an emergency stop on the side. Yep. Also, uh, engine start and stop button on the yep. side. Uh, for the tracks. Okay. You can switch so on or switch once off. Once it's on green, yeah. it switches on to the tracks. You can use the tracks the and the pump is blocked. Yeah. And if you um, switch off it, then you can start your pump or reverse pumping. Okay, also. and then the tracks are stopped. Yeah, right. Okay. And also, it's a safety thing, you can not can push the... The, the levers by mistake, yeah. Button. Okay. <laughs> then we have one switch for RPM, plus and minus. One for the agitator. That's the agitator, yeah. yeah. So that's off, that's on. Okay. One for the vibrator. Yep. And one for the air compressor. Okay. And the last one are for pumping or reverse. Okay. So this is pumping concrete and this is reversing. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. That's all on the.